This video tutorial shows how to create an IP register using SRA's online IP record portal. The document now shown on screen lists step by step the procedure for accessing and using the IP portal and together with this video explains how to complete and submit an IP register. Sugar Research Australia's intellectual property policy requires researchers provide an IP register for each project. The research agreement with SRA enforces the provision of an IP register. SRA has introduced a software package called Intium as its central IP management system. Intium uses an interactive IP record portal to capture project information supplied by researchers. The IP register created with Intium replaces SRA's previous form-based Schedule C IP register with only the Intium version now being used. Once approved, the submitted IP register is an official document that will be legally embedded in the research agreement. Definition of note is for disclosure, which is a data record created by the portal detailing an SRA project and its associated intellectual property background IP, third-party IP, and the project IP. The recommended browser for launching Intium is Internet Explorer. Using your browser and clicking on the approved link to the portal, the login page is seen. New users need to request an account. Returning users log in with the previous username and password. After logging in, the dashboard page will open, which shows the recent activity of the logged in user. To add a new disclosure, click on the button over here on the side. After inputting the title, choose the type of disclosure and click on create new disclosure. The top area of a disclosure page is for admin purposes. On first opening a disclosure, each of the sections is closed with only the title showing. The information for a disclosure is organized in blocks of information or data sections, beginning with the instructions, project details, remarks, investigators, all the way down to SRA project, which again is for administration use. Note that some of the sections have got an asterisk next to them, inventors, investigators, whereas some don't, remarks, instructions. The asterisk indicates which sections contain mandatory or required fields to be, to be completed with project information. To open a section, click on the title box. We've opened the project details one section. Again, you note asterisks indicating required information. This information is required before a disclosure can be successfully submitted. The remaining disclosure fields will be addressed at a later stage during contracting of the project. Now that some information has been entered, it's a good idea to save each section before moving on. Now moving on to the investigators inventors section, we click on Add Inventor. We need at least one entry in this section. Normally the Chief Investigator will be giving editor rights and co-investigators will be given view only rights. Type in the name and click on Search. You can choose the role type. Kints. For chief investigator is normally one, and if they're a sole investigator, that 
100%, contribution could be 100%. And we save the changes. If we have other investigators to add, we click on Add Inventor again. Move on to Background IP section. There are four parts. For section A, Table, to begin enter, we add a row. Once the information is entered, click on Save. Click Save each time before adding another row. Now it's a good idea to go to the top or bottom of the form to save as draft. Now moving on to part B, information is recorded in two tables and similar to before we add a row to enter information. The screen now shows a completed example of part B of the background and third party register. And we've made changes, so I'll go up and click Save as Draft. Note this, each singular IP item entries are required in both tables using the same number, 1 and 1, for that IP item. And these numbers are also used in subsequent sections of the background and third party IP register. For part C and D of the background and third party IP registers, refer to the numbers in the tables above, noting that part C is required, whereas part D is not. Remember to save this information before continuing. Moving on to the project IP, the information for this register is entered in a similar manner to the to the background IP register. The screen now shows a completed example of the project IP register. Now that completes all the required sections of the IP register at this FRP stage with further data fields to be completed before final contracting of the research agreement. When you're happy with the content, you click on Submit for Review. Click on Yes to confirm the submission. It cannot be saved because there are errors on the page. So we close this and we need to check the sections. Property details cannot be empty. We need to make a declaration and we need to save it. We'll submit for review once again and this time we hope that the draft status will change to submitted. Okay. The closure cannot be edited but remarks can still be made. So moving to Remarks section. To reopen a submission for editing purposes, we can use this section to notify an SRA manager. So once our remark is added, we can click on the Save Remark and a message is sent to an SRA manager to ask to reopen this disclosure. Now at any stage of the process, even in the draft stage, a hard copy of the disclosure can be generated by clicking on Download as PDF or Download as Word. The screen now shows the Word version of the disclosure, which can be shared with team members to confirm the information entered. The Word file is also now in a form required to be submitted to SRA. I hope this tutorial was useful in how to complete an IP register. Thank you for watching.